Good morning, everybody. If you'd like to uh, open up your Bibles and follow along this morning, we'll be in 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> As you are uh, turning there, of course, we would continue to like to extend our, our sympathies and prayers to Kelly and, and to your dad and your whole family. Um, we, uh, it's been uh, quite, a, quite a season in our, in our time. We uh, obviously lost um, Miss Mabel recently as well. And um, you know, I was looking through my old electronic memories. And six years ago yesterday, we had the fire truck out here. I had that picture in my phone. And um, you know, it's, it's just uh, when we come together, we, we remember a lot of things. I have a picture um, that I took from right here. I don't even know how many long, how, how many years ago it, it was now, um, but it's just uh, it's kind of a reminder. Sometimes days go on, and this is probably a bad thing to say during the pandemic because it does feel like 2020 has been about 10 years long. But um, it's just it, you know it, it kind of strikes you how different the picture is. Now, when just just you know taking a picture of the auditorium and seeing who's here, and that changes, and it changes. You know, it, it changes in, in, in ways sometimes that bring us great joy. There are, there are little faces out here, out here now that weren't, weren't out here then, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's really neat. That's really cool. And there are, there are faces that were here then that are not here now, and that, that, makes, us, um, that makes us sad. But hopefully it reminds us to, to, to draw nearer to the Lord um, because the season's the seasons are his, and, um, and, when, and when we are his, it's going to all be okay. <clears throat> this morning, we're going to start in 1 Peter chapter 2. Um, so Peter says, So put away all malice and all guile and insincerity and envy and all slander. Like newborn babes, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation. For you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. When you come in contact with Jesus, you taste a kindness that you cannot get anywhere else. You come in contact with a pure and perfect kindness that cannot be replicated on earth. Now, it's our effort as people of God to try our best to replicate that. Unfortunately, you know, we are imperfect. We are, we are people that make mistakes. And by imperfect, I mean we have flaws. Um, and we don't get to see this, this level of kindness that we experience when we experience Jesus. And Peter is trying to remind the folks he's talking to here of that. And he tells them in the very beginning to put away all malice and guile and insincerity and envy and slander. Put away these things that are unkind toward people. Amen. Put away these things that, that cause you to say things that are, that are very, very um, hurtful and unkind to people. And the reason that he gives for us to do that, or for them to do that, and you know, in second hand us to do that, is because you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. <clears throat> and his response to that is, starting in verse 4, he says, Come to him. Peter's suggesting that the appropriate response to the, to, the, to the taste of the kindness of the Lord is to draw near to him. To come to him. To be in his presence, to come and to have this relationship, to be close to the Lord. He calls him that living stone. He says, come to him, to that living stone, rejected by men, but in God's sight, chosen and precious. One of the things we typically forget is the rejection of Jesus by men. I believe that, that, that we forget this. I believe God doesn't want us to forgive this. I believe that Jesus instituted the supper that we just took in order to help us not forget this. Amen. But oftentimes what we do with that is we make it about what we got 
out of that deal. We make our relationship with Jesus and our, and our relationship with him much too transactional. We make it, this is what I get out of it. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this so that I can get that. And if we do that too much, we lose this idea of the rejection of Jesus by men. And we start to think that the world is safe and the world likes us and the world is our friend. Amen. And we start to think that our problems can be solved in worldly ways, Amen. that we can follow worldly wisdom, that we can blend right in and everything is going to be fantastic by both loving Jesus and loving the world because we can all work together. And yet the Bible consistently reminds us that the world that men rejected Jesus. Amen. Too often we see the cross as something that was bound to happen. We call it God's will, which is fine, but we call it God's will to the exclusion of man's will. Amen. Because you see, Jesus hanging on that cross dying was man's will too. It was, brought, it was brought before the people. What should we do with him? And they said, crucify him. Amen. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Over and over again. Amen. That's what they said. Rejected. We like to fool ourselves into believing that we live in a world that embraces Jesus. We may live in a world that embraces parts of Jesus. We may live in a world that embraces the idea of Jesus. We may live in a world that wants you to have just enough, just enough Jesus around so that the Jesus people don't get discouraged and turn. But the world is not much different. <clears throat> the cornerstone, the one that we are to come to, was rejected by men and still is and has been. It's not new. <clears throat> and yet Peter is telling us here to come to him, to that living stone that was rejected by men. But in God's sight was chosen and precious. You see, what stands out to men is not what necessarily stands out to God. That's the beauty, that's the beauty of when of what we saw play out between Saul and David. Saul was selected as the first king. He's a head taller than everybody else. Good looking fellow, that Saul. Made sense to be the king. Looked like a king. Carried himself like a king. He's a king. So he becomes king. And yet very quickly gets caught up in this power. And boy, that doesn't that happen all the time. He's caught up in, the, in authority, caught up in being the man, for lack of a better phrase, and turns away from God very, very quickly. So what does God do? Well, we've got to find somebody else. So through Samuel, he's got to find someone else. And in fact, the someone else that he finds wasn't even brought to the tryout. <laughs> right? Wasn't even brought to the tryout. There's no way it could be him. You stay home. You tend the sheep. Let the big boys handle this, right? Let the ones with the real talent go and find out. Go and see who Samuel is going to make the king. And Samuel says, through the guidance of God, of course, don't you have another son? Yeah, but you don't want to see him. You don't want to see little old Davy over there. You don't want to see him. He's, he, he's home taking care of stuff. Don't, don't worry about him. No, you need to bring David here. And he's ignoring the king. Not what man was looking for, but what God was looking for, and who God called later a man after his own heart. Someone that, that they never even thought of. Amen. Someone they, they never even thought of. Because see, God doesn't see things the way, that, the way that we see things, and it's easy to say that except for the fact that the call is for us to begin to try to see things like God does. We can't rest on this idea that God sees things 
greater and clearer than we do, sure, that's true. That's always true. But the charge for us is to change ourselves, to be transformed by the Spirit so that we can see things more like God does. That's the call. <clears throat> and what Peter is saying here is that he says, And like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is the living stone in this, in this, in this context. Peter refers to him as, as the living stones. But then what does he say to them? He says, and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. He's saying, become like him. He is the living stone. You need to be like that. You need to be the living stone. So that when we build this house on the foundation of Jesus... That's what we look like. It's very hard to look at a built building and figure out exactly which brick was laid first. Now, you might know, if you know a little bit about construction, you might know, well, I figure they probably started here. But it's hard to look and see exactly which brick was first. Because they looked the same. But one of them had to be first, right? But that's not what matters. When the, when the building is constructed, that is not what matters. What matters in this building that we are all supposed to be laid together on top of Jesus, the precious cornerstone, when what is built is built, it is built for sacrifices to God. And that's what matters. What matters is the sacrifice that we offer to God. This is not a new concept. This is not a new concept. Paul talks about this, right? Right? Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Amen. This is not a new idea. It's not the same writer either. <clears throat> but this idea that we are to be together a unit that lives to worship and sacrifice to God. And we sacrifice through Jesus. For it stands with Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And he who believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. You see, this idea that Jesus was going to be rejected is an age-old idea. It was known by God before the child Jesus was born. Amen. And it played itself out. Again, I want to I, I reiterate this point. Not because God made it happen, but because God knows how man responds to him. God knows how man responds to him. Man overwhelmingly rejects God. Amen. Overwhelmingly. That is... Plays itself, plays itself out in the Bible from the very beginning to the very end. Amen. People overwhelmingly reject God. Even if they embrace parts of God, there's still a bridge that it's just a bit too far every now and again. There's still something I just can't sacrifice. There's still an opportunity I just can't turn down. Because to truly let go of all of myself is a challenge. It's a great challenge. But the one that, that, the, that, that was rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that will make men stumble. A rock that will make them fall. For they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. That idea of God's own people there is people possessed by God, not like demonic possession, obviously, but people that are owned by God, that belong to God. Amen. That you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were no people, once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 
This idea of once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Any kind of people that we claim to be that we take pride in is misguided, except God's people. <clears throat> he says, you were no people, but now you are God's people. Because you know what other people don't offer? Mercy. They don't offer mercy. There's a requirement. There's an expectation. There's all this that you have to do. There's no mercy. It's merit. People call for merit this, merit that. Jesus says you can't merit what I'm giving you. That's what grace is. God says, you can't merit what I'm going to give to you, what I have given you. You can't merit that. <clears throat> Beloved, I beseech you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh that wage war against your soul. Maintain good conduct among the Gentiles so that in case they speak against you as wrongdoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. You see, the reason why we have to we have to, why the way we carry ourselves as, as outsiders, this is why it's so important. This is why it's so disappointing. And I think we all do this at times, but it's so disappointing that as Christians, we try so much to fit in. We try to make Christianity, you know, we try to negotiate mainstream living with Christianity when God tells us that's not going to happen. When Jesus tells us that's not going to happen. But yet we hope. We hope. We think, sometimes we believe, which, we, which is when it becomes a problem, that it's, that it's not true anymore. That what Jesus has said has expired. That what God has said, has the time has run out. And now we live in this Christian utopia where everyone loves Jesus and follows God all the time. And yet the Bible clearly says it's not going to be that way. And it's not that way. But yet it's important that we carry ourselves the right way so that in case they speak against you as wrongdoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Jesus, these are, these are, this is a, a recitation of the words of Jesus himself. Let your light shine so that when you do good works, they see those things and they give glory to who? To you? Is that what it says? No. You're right, Sean. It's not what it says. It says when they see your good works, you give glory to God. You give glory to the Father. That's what they're going to do when they see that. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it's to be emperor as supreme or to governors as set by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Live as free men, yet without using your freedom as a pretext for evil, but live as servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. We struggle with this text sometimes, with, with, with this idea of, of submission. And I, I just want you to know what it really is. The idea there is, is that you know, we, we follow the rules because if we become evildoers, we, we lose our credibility. That's, 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 the, that's the deal. I mean, that's what it's about. It's not about... Anything else. People like to make it about a lot of things. It's not about anything else but that. Because, again, when we're talking about following God, what we're talking about is we're talking about people seeing the glory of God through us. Amen. That's what it's about. And that is why we build our house together on the precious cornerstone. Amen. So that we stand together, we stand united as a family of God, offering sacrifice and praise to God that he finds acceptable. Amen. That's the deal. Amen. That's the deal. And if we try to make life, if we try to make things, if we try to make circumstances about any more or less than that, then we're just missing the mark. 
we are missing the mark in that case. And the thing is, we can do it. This is something that we can do. We can submit ourselves to Jesus. It's not always easy. We can submit ourselves to God. It's not always easy. I grant you that 100%. But it can be done because he wants to help us. We need to come, but come to him humbly and ask him to help us. And nothing that is happening can ever stop God. Amen. Half a million people, half a million people this week tested positive for the coronavirus. Just this week, half a million people in the United States. Not in the rest of the world, the United States. Half a million people Amen. this week. That's a lot of folk. <laughs> you know. Some of those people are going to die. It's going to happen. And it's not over. But we can still glorify Jesus through that. We can still live for God through that. Whatever challenges it is that you see are not so big that God cannot be praised. The funny thing about this responsibility about standing here anywhere in the world, when you're standing in front of people talking about God and trying to encourage people about God. The interesting thing is, never ever in a situation, unless you just have an audience of one person, unless one person's here, no one's on the, on the live stream, you've got people going through different things in their lives. People going through good things, people going through hard things, people going through trying things, people going through encouraging things. And what you try to do is you try to give people, you try to give everybody something to hold on to, as hard as that is, because everyone feels differently this morning. We have people grieving. We have people hurt. We have people mad. We have people happy. We have people rejoicing. We have people praising. People, some people are thrilled, some people are devastated, some people are happy, some people are sad, some people are hurting, some people are healed. And yet all those situations, both good or bad, God is bigger. Amen. And Jesus loves you, no matter the status of your heart right now. Amen. Jesus loves you. He is calling for you. Peter encourages you to taste the goodness, the kindness of the Lord and come to him. Come to him and allow him to be the foundation of us together. Allow him to be the foundation of what we build together as people who love God, who want to serve God, no matter what state that we're in. Let us come to Jesus. Let us taste the goodness. Let us build Build the building of worship and praise to God today and every day, no matter where you are or how you feel. That's where we are. That's what we want to be. I hope you want to be a part of that. I hope if you're home listening, you want to be a part of that. Anywhere within the the sound of my voice. I hope that's what, that's what you want and that's what you feel and that's what you desire because that's what we're called to do by God himself. This morning, if there's any way that we can help you, there's any way we can encourage you, we ask you to let us know at this time as we stand and sing.